Hello there, everybody. How you doing? So today we're back here again talking about Scottish independence. Um, you know, obviously, you know, I've been covering that here on this channel quite a bit. Uh, you know, this is something that's kind of diverting for me for me to look into. And and, and obviously I haven't made any um, serious declarations of, of where where I'm, you know, where I, you know, expect this to be or where I expect it to go or what the decision should be. Uh, ultimately, I defer to the decision of the Scottish people uh, in terms of independence or no. But to go ahead and talk about this stuff a little bit more, I mean, it's for me a little bit diverting, obviously, from what I do on my other channel, which is talk a lot about criminal justice and, and, and murder cases and, um, you know, the appropriate um, way that, you know, you know, things should be in our criminal justice system and that sort of thing. And so sometimes that can be a little bit um, heavy. So sometimes I like to go off on a different little topic. Well, this time I decided I wanted to talk a little bit about Scottish independence because I have so many friends that I've made in Scotland uh, because of what I do over on my other channel. And so I took an interest in this. So I want to start out by saying for people that are you know, either unionists or that are no voters, but not necessarily unionists, um, that I, I'm, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not saying Scottish independence is what's, is the answer right now. I mean, all I can say is, is that the party that's pushing for it seems to be putting Scotland first and continues to, uh, do that where I see Westminster is continuing in its, you know, minimization of the Scots. It's, you know, just casual kind of dismissal of the concerns uh, in Scotland. Um, I see that, and, and I, I only see that getting worse. And so that's why I'm, like, seriously looking at this, you know, issue of Scottish independence. And you know, what is the best avenue at this point? I would like to see Scotland get a fair shake from Westminster. But I don't think it's, I don't really think it's going to happen. I think Westminster is, you know, ingrained in a way of, acting and in a way of of looking at and treating the scots that's not likely to change without some significant pressure so now that i've said that i think i have a suggestion for those scots because i realize that when it comes to the scottish people right now not it's not there's not an overwhelming amount of them that are saying yes for independence. It's very much still kind of about 50-50 the way the Scots feel about this. And so here's my, you know, suggestion. Is that obviously the yes voters and the people who favor independence have very effectively built a nationalist party the SMP that is pushing for independence and to and that's their solution to Westminster and the way that Scotland has been treated by Westminster but what if the no voters in Scotland who don't necessarily want to leave the European I'm sorry that don't necessarily want to leave the United Kingdom got together and built a second nationalist party that was all about getting in and, 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 and taking it to Westminster saying, look, we're on your side. We want Scotland to remain part of the United Kingdom, but you are going to have to do things like honor the promises you made when the first Indy referendum uh, came around. When you came down promising that we would all be equals and everything, you got you to gotta honor those promises. You're going to have to hold them to their promises. And you be you might be asking me, oh yeah, Irikose, really? How are we supposed to hold them to that? Well, that's where the SMP comes in. You have a party right now that is bucking 
and bucking for change. They are bucking so hard for change, they're ready to break fragment from the United Kingdom. They are ready and willing, and half the population is right along with them. That's your leverage. That's how you get Westminster to listen. I know it's easier said than done. But it would prevent Westminster from taking the attitude of the Scots are too stupid or too poor or too whatever. You know, the same, the same kind of rhetoric that we see come out of Westminster. It will be much more difficult for them to do that if they had a second nationalist party in Scotland basically campaigning that we don't necessarily want to break up the United Kingdom, but we can't exactly deny... Ultimately, if, 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 the, if the Scottish people don't feel respected by Westminster that they're going to eventually vote for independence, then there's not going to be anything we can do about that. We're just here calling it out like it is. And if, and if Westminster had to deal with, with a party that's supposed to be reasonable and, and, and you know in its eyes that doesn't want to leave the United Kingdom, that's what I mean by reasonable in its eyes, it's just so people don't get mixed up on what I mean there. But... Westminster should be able to respect that nationalist party and if they and if they and if they and if they basically you know just don't listen to that and 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 casually brush that aside then I think it pretty much tells Scotland that you know Westminster's never going to be in it for them and 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 that the, the independence referendum should happen, and at that point, people are going to have to make a decision for themselves of, of how they want it to happen. I mean, I don't, I don't like it either. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking about it. I mean, even though, even though I like the idea of Scottish independence as a romantic idea, I love it. Um, I think it would only enhance the, the reputation that, 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 that the Scottish or the Scots, you know, enjoy around the world. It would only enhance it. But those aren't reasons for it. You know what I mean? Ultimately, ultimately, I would like to see what I just suggested happen because I understand that creating a hard border between Scotland and England and Wales and all that sort of stuff and even Northern Ireland, that creating hard borders and creating all that stuff when people have previously, you know, enjoyed free passage and, and all that sort of thing that that's undesirable. Um, some people find it undesirable that if they separate from the United Kingdom, then they feel kind of alone. And if they don't make it on their own, you know, so some of it's fear, you know, of, can we do it on our own? There's a lot of reasons why there's a lot of, you know, factors to consider. And that's why I haven't, you know, it's why I'm keen to continue to collect information because I don't think it's a decision to be made lightly but I do think that the SNP you know if 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 a, if a second nationalist party came in that party could use the leverage created by the SNP and and just how close they are to independence and and and, and fighting for independence that a, a a second nationalist party a more say conservative one could use that that fact that the SMP is on the verge of that as leverage. And I think that's, I don't know, I just thought it was an interesting thought I had. And, you know, so I thought I'd just voice it because ultimately, you know, it's going to come down to what the Scots decide for themselves. Well, after after fighting with Westminster a bit and... And, and 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 getting some of the same crap uh eventually at some point indie referendum I, two is going to happen may not happen overnight but i do believe it is on the horizon just don't know exactly when that it will be uh whether it'll be 2020 or maybe even further in the distant future um but i think it's inevitable at this point the independence marches uh, that are going to be happening. Obviously, we had one in Glasgow. We're going to be having one in Inverness coming up here. Uh, so, you know, you guys can watch as Sharon and I and our friend uh, Pete, uh, we are planning to sit down and watch it live and chat about it and comment on it uh, while it's live potentially. So that's something you guys can 
uh, look for maybe next weekend. So I don't know. Those are just some thoughts I'm having because, I mean, obviously, you know, number one, the UK leaving the EU was kind of the nuclear option, you know. You would think if the nu- you're going to use the nuclear option, you'd like a little bit the numbers to be a little bit better than just 52, 48, or 54 to 46. You'd like those numbers probably to be a little better. But anyway, it's the nuclear option. And when it comes down to it, Scotland leaving the UK is kind of, again, the nuclear option. But when it comes down to it, it really looks in, in many ways that Scotland is just moving in a different direction. Than, than Westminster it's that 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 I mean for me that seems pretty darn obvious they just have they just have two different kind of modus operandi you know what I mean they're not they're just not headed in the same direction and it seems to me inevitable that Scotland's gonna end up going its own way but like I said there's a lot of things to consider about it obviously there's lots of people that that have family on both sides of the border and they don't like the idea like I said of the hard border that could be created and all these there's a lot of reasons why uh, independence is is a a very you know um, sensitive issue uh, with 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 a lot of people so anyway I will continue to look at it and 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 check it out here but for those of you who are interested look for us Saturday morning uh, covering the Independence March in Inverness. Uh, we should, you know, I, I love hanging out with Sharon and our friend Pete, so that should be a lot of fun. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe, and we'll see you. And finally, I'm just going to leave you here with some of the words of Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, these are, this is going to be from a, basically a press conference she gave from March 13th of 2017. And... I think it's important to listen as she continues to pound on the fact that Scotland needs a, a clear plan moving forward at this point because things are going to get wild. It's going to get, you know, things aren't staying, things weren't going to be staying the same. And, and, and the vote to leave the EU was, 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 was definitely going to ensure that things weren't going to be staying the same. And so anyways, I'm going to leave you with her words because they're reasonable. Obviously, as I, pointed out in this video not everybody agrees with the SMP's approach so maybe there's a different approach and maybe that approach can use the leverage created by the SMP and the support that it has because West even Westminster can't deny that fact so just something I was thinking uh, anyways I leave you with the words of Nicola uh, Sturgeon here and uh, we'll see you later Good morning, everybody. Before the end of this month, and very possibly as early as tomorrow, the Prime Minister will trigger Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty, setting the United Kingdom on course to leave the EU in March 2019. It is important, therefore, for me to report now on the Scottish Government's attempts to find compromise with the UK Government and set out our plan to protect Scotland's interests. Right now, Scotland stands at a hugely important crossroads. We didn't choose to be in this position. In common with most people across the country, I wish that we weren't in this position. But we are, and the stakes are high. So we must have a plan for the way forward. For better or worse, depending on your point of view, the future of the UK looks very different today than it did two years ago. As a result of the Brexit vote, we face a future not just outside the EU, but also outside the world's biggest single market. In addition, the collapse of the Labour Party means that we face a prolonged period of uninterrupted and unchecked Conservative government at Westminster. Some predict that the Tories could be in power now at Westminster until 2030 or beyond. And after a period which has seen the establishment of the Scottish Parliament and more recently hard-won extensions to its responsibilities, we now face the prospect of a centralisation of power at Westminster. Indeed, the Prime Minister herself has been clear that the Brexit process will see the UK government reserve for itself powers in areas that are currently wholly devolved to the Scottish Parliament. 
All of this has massive implications for Scotland. It has implications for our economy, for jobs, opportunities, public spending and living standards and for our ability to protect and advance our vital day-to-day -day priorities in education, health and business. It has implications for our society. How open, welcoming, diverse and fair will we be in future? And it has implications for our democracy. To what extent will we be able to determine our own direction of travel rather than having that decided for us? In short, it is not just a relationship with Europe that is at stake. What is at stake is the kind of country we will become. Now, at times of change and uncertainty, the instinct to do nothing and just hope for the best is understandable. But in my view, it is not the right one. At times like these, it is more important than ever to have a clear plan for the way ahead, to try as far as is possible to be in control of events and not just at the mercy of them. That is what I have always done. It is what I have tried to do since the day after the EU referendum last year, and it is what I am determined to continue to do.